We're going to be in uh, first, uh, Second Corinthians this week. And we're going to talk about pressing on. Press on, to be spurred on, to continue on. Because sometimes we get so tired, we get uh, weary. Uh, sometimes it's hard to keep going at times. So I, I thought, what makes someone tired? Uh, maybe daylight savings time when you lose an hour of sleep, right? Or some of you may use that to sleep in longer, you know, and, uh, but, uh, you, know, that, you know, we get tired. Uh, what about work? Work tires us out and stress, stress tires us out. Um, life in general, physical activities uh, tire us out. I went and played pickleball a couple weeks ago for two hours, and then I had to sleep for two hours. It was crazy. <laughs> I used to play all day. I just can't do that anymore. But, but those things. Uh, maybe not physically. Maybe mentally. Right? There's things we do mentally. You're behind the computer screen or you're thinking about how you're going to uh, get everything done in, in today and your, your schedule and agenda and how you're going to get that and just wears you out. Uh, uh, emotional highs and lows, especially in the, the, the life we are living today where there just seems to be highs and lows and back and forth that can just tire us out. Another thing that tires us out is people, right? Yeah, we tire each other out. Zeke's about ready to go out. He's tired of me already. He's a uh, grandpa. Grandpa, just let me sleep, okay? You know, we just, uh, just life in general, we get tired. And then I got thinking, well, what do I do when I'm tired? Our granddaughter, Amelia, she is the most fun, loving, play, you know, grandma, play with me. Grandma, I want to play with grandma. Grandpa, go away. Grandma, I want to play with you type, type of girl. And then, then when she gets tired, right, it's like the instant switch, the emotions, crying for this and crying for that. And just, you know, it just, she just gets tired and crabby. Uh, she learned that from her grandpa. Um, but me also, you know, at, at one point in, in the evening, I just, you know, I just, I'm done. I get tired. I'm done. I'm going to bed. I just, I just get out of here. It's, uh, um, just exhausted. I don't want to hear anything. I just want to go to bed. But some other things to do when, when we're tired, um, we act hastily. Uh, we make poor decisions. Uh, we get grumpy. But there's also a good in tiredness. We can work a good day and do a lot of good things and get that agenda done and, and feel uh, accomplished at the end of the day, but exhausted, and, but you sleep well, don't you? Yeah. But we all get tired. We're all limited. Jesus often got up early, went alone, got away by himself uh, to refresh, um, to, to get his mind back where it needed to be, to get his eyes back on God the Father, uh, to fulfill his mission, his purpose of going to the cross. Because that's what he had to do. That was his, his main mission, go to the cross for, for you and I. Ways we get refreshed or untired or, or to, to sleep. We all sleep a little different, right? Some of us sleep for hours and hours and some of us sleep for minutes and then we're back up. It's, uh, we're, all, we're all different in that way. Uh, sometimes we take a break. I'll often get up from my computer and I'll just take a walk around the church half a dozen times or the neighborhood or whatever just to get my, my uh, uh, refreshing of, of, of thinking uh, other than that computer screen. Um, maybe do something out of the norm, something you don't usually do, something out of the box. Go do something different and be refreshed in that area. One thing I found personally for me to be refreshed, uh, which also brings tiredness, is to serve. To serve other people. That refreshes me. Mark and Candy, right? Always going around with the homeless. I bet you're exhausted half the time. I bet it refreshes you too, right? Yeah, right? You find what God has called you to do, and, and sometimes you don't know, so you, tr you just need to try stuff. Let's, let's serve, because we were created in God's image, and God is a God who serves, who gives, who, who uh, meets the needs of those around him, right? That's why he came for you and I, because he saw the great need we were in, and, and we were helpless to do anything about it. And he came so he could go to the cross and die for you and me that we may have life and that freedom. Amen. amen is Amen. Serving. Pressing on. 
So how are you today, uh, spiritually, physically, emotionally? Uh, where are you at? We're going to play a, a video clip um, from the Green Mile. It's towards the end. Where the, um, it's almost the end of the guy's life. He's, he's condemned. Um, but I think it will encompass what maybe a lot of us are thinking in today's world, in today's culture. Just tired of the world, the pain, the ugliness, the, uh, the hurt. And I would say just don't give up. Apostle Paul spoke about this often in his letters. Don't give up, even if you're tired, even if you're ready to give up. I think COVID has spurred on uh, the excuse of not doing anything for the Lord or, or doing a limited amount. But I challenge you to press on because you matter. You matter. And the one sitting next to you matters we may feel like john up here you know you know we are surrounded by people all the time but sometimes we so lonely we get to know each other a little bit as it was said it's like a uh, our life is like an onion you just keep peeling back the bits and pieces until you get to the core and we all know each other a little bit maybe peel off a little little bit but we don't know each other I, I don't think we know each other like we should because we're busy trying to uh, go through life instead of slowing down and just enjoying life and each other. So there's times we feel lonely. There's times as a pastor, you know, just jumping from one crisis to the next. And, and you know, you got to do what you got to do, but sometimes it just it doesn't seem like it's enough. I wish you could just you know, invest in others more and more and get to know each other more. And if we could all just learn to slow down and do that with maybe one, maybe two around us, whoever God has put in our path. And I invite you to find that in your life because we need each other. Right? We need God ultimately more than than anything, right? He is our life, but he, he made us to need each other as well. And that's why we come and we're, we're encouraged from each other. And we pray with each other. And we get to know each other. And we invest in our, in our children. And we invest in our teens. But you matter. Everyone you see matters. And sometimes I think uh, we forget that or we don't think that it's true, right? As we get in that uh, woe is me, nobody notices. I would invite you to, to try to notice. Because I find is I notice that it spurs me on. It re revives me, refreshes me. At the end of the day, I can, I can sleep. I can sleep well, right, hon? I do. <laughs> right. I do. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 3, 16 through 18, but whenever, one, when, whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away for the Lord is spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord and the Lord who is spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. What an opportunity. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil in the temple was ripped so that we may enter into the throne room of heaven. And we can go there boldly. And, and, and it speaks here that, that brings freedom. And we talked about, a bunch about that in youth Sunday school this morning, the freedom we have to live life to the fullest. Not what the world thinks is the fullest, right? But what God says and designed for us. And we are changed more and more into his likeness. What a, what a beautiful opportunity we have to to shine God's love on those around us. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 
1 and 2, it says, Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. We never give up. A new opportunity in life that God has given us. And we never get up. The debt is paid. We don't have to worry about the debt being paid. We don't have to keep thinking, oh, I haven't done enough. I haven't paid it. It's paid and, and forget about it, right? For those of you who have paid off your mortgage or paid off your car, what a burden is, is lifted, right? Woo, amen. This is far greater than any mortgage or any car loan. This is life. This is life to the fullest for eternity. In verse 2, Paul says, we, the Apostle Paul says, we reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of God. We tell the truth before God, and all who are honest know this. We don't give up because of God's mercy. And we reject anything but the truth. And the truth is, there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one way to salvation, and it's only through Jesus Christ. Because he paid the price. That Jesus is fully God, fully human, came to us to, to communicate to us and to love us and to seek and save us and show us God's amazing love to us. And Jesus is exactly who he said he was. And the Bible is the word of God. It is the truth because the word is God. It is Jesus. And let's not veer away from the truth and stay solid on that foundation. Apostle Paul goes on in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8, and says, we are pressed on every side by troubles. You ever feel there? We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are not broken. He goes on and says, we are perplexed. We're wondering, what is going on? I bet we've done that a lot lately, right? Turn the news on and say, what in the world is happening? We're perplexed, but we're not driven to despair because we still have hope because of what Christ has done. Amen? Amen. Amen. Goes on and says, we are hunted down. There's times you feel alone, right? Everybody's after you. You just feel alone. You're hunted. But it says we're never abandoned by God. We are never alone. We'll never be left alone because God is with us. He goes on and says, we get knocked down. There will be difficult moments in life. There are times when we get slammed, we get hit, and we get hit hard. But we are not destroyed, which means we don't lose. You may be going through some tough times and getting hit hard, but you know what? Because of our hope in Christ, you don't lose. It says, through suffering, in verse 10, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be seen by others. We get this great opportunity in our lives to show the world Jesus, no matter how we feel crushed or troubled or despair. Our eyes are on him. Verse 11 says, yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus. So that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying. So we will, we will face death. So we will live in the face of death. But this has resulted in eternal life for you. Paul was saying, I, I do this so that you may know Christ, that you may have life. Even though all the struggles we're going through, and although though we're facing death at times, we do it for you. 13 says, but we continue to preach because we have that same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I love this, I be, believe in God, so I spoke. Right? I believe in Jesus, so I, I'm going to tell you about him. That's the faith, the faith that we, we, we should have, or we sh at least should be um, working towards. 14 says, we know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present ourselves together with you. That is our hope in death, that there is life because of Christ. In verse 15, all of this is for your benefit and mine as God's grace reaches more and more people. There will be a greater thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. Amen.
I want you to think of um, who reached you. Who in your life, as you look back, um, invested in you? Probably multiple people. As I, as I think back in my life, many of those that invested in me have, have passed on, but I still have many more today that are investing in me, encouraging me, speaking into my life, into my family's life. But who invested in you? Another question is, uh, who, who, who have you reached? Who are you investing in? Or, or uh, who, yeah, who are you investing in today? And what did that look like when someone was investing in you or you were investing in someone else? See, we can't invest in everybody, but we can invest in one or two that God has put into our lives. And maybe that's your, your spouse, maybe that's your children, but outside of that, who else is there? One thing that keeps me going, spurs me on in serving is, is our, our children here, our, our youth, uh, our uh, youth, on, youth and kids on Sunday night and then another kids' night on Wednesday. And I, I just have always said, one matters. One matters. If just one shows up, it matters. Because they are not only the church of today, but the church of the future. They are the ones that, that um, are struggling with life, Right? They're the ones that are, I think they're adults and know everything and yet don't have a clue. I know that because I was there once. Right? We we're all teenagers once. We knew everything. But they matter. And we're going to take a, a, just a minute out and watch a slideshow from uh, Youth Week and just see some faces that matter.
And after a week, the youth leaders will never be the same either. So. <laughs> Uh, but that's what spurs should spur us on. Don't we love to see kids up front? Don't we love to see gifts that they have and encourage them? And we, we, you know, have been given the opportunity to invest in lives. And uh, we can use your help, absolutely. Um, second, second Corinthians. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, verse sixteen. Apostle Paul says this, this is why we never give up. That's one reason we, we never give up right there. And those that are sitting here. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce us a glorious, uh, a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we look... Don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. And one other uh, couple verses from the Apostle Paul to the letter to the Philippian church. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things, that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and look forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. I challenge you to press on because you matter. Our children matter. Our teens matter. And this is, the church is <laughs> the only entity in the world where there's true hope through Jesus Christ, right? If you don't think you matter, I want to watch one more video. This is the, the video sermon of the, you know, <laughs> three, three videos in one sermon. This is an offensive lineman for the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, I think it was on Tennessee too, but just tell him about an award he won and, and something that happened in his life where he invested. Sometimes there's moments where we in, do invest and we know it and we, we, uh, we plan that out and there's other times when it just happens. But it's to be ready to invest in every one that God has put in front of us, every moment, Lord, how can I invest? How can I help someone else raise their children in the Lord, right? How, how can I help, uh, how can someone else come and help me invest? This life is more, more than just about me, right? It's more than just about you. We were placed on this earth to, to love God first and worship him and to love those around us. To listen. To speak when we need to speak, but to invest. So I'm asking this morning that the Holy Spirit just speaks to you. I've been praying that, you know, where can you invest? I know one great need is, is in, our, in our children. My wife leads uh, kids worship, and she leads that because she loves me. <laughs> it's hard. She needs, she needs some investment, Right? And I'm not here to make you feel guilty in that end either. But where is God? Where, who are you investing in? Because it matters.